We're going to start out page 45, right of the land. Lord, we give the Father and the Son to the Holy Spirit now and forever. Lord, 
Make us worth to stand at your right hand. All of us together will sing glory to your divinity and give thanks in a clear voice to you, the Hidden One. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, to you be glory and upon us mercy forever. Amen. Amen. O Christ, medicine of truth, truth you, you humbled, humbled yourself toward earthly, earthly kings and healed the suffering and sickness of our afflicted human race. Heal us, O Lord, as we bow before you and ask pardon from you. Remove from us by your mercy trials, distress, and grievous pain. In your darkness, forgive the hidden blemishes in our souls. And when we are healed in soul and body, we will give praise and thanks to your unlimited grace. In your mercy you came down toward earthly beings, you who are forgiven and holy in the abundance of your grace. Forgive now our iniquities, in your love accept our sincere petition. Be pleased by the sweet fragrance of our prayers, which we are offering before your majesty. And send down food and tranquility and peace to the whole world. O Lord our God, to you be glory forever. Amen. The oh, physician came to bind up those who suffer. He gave health to all who are afflicted and healing to all who are sick. Almighty God, forever, by the wounds and sufferings which you bore, you healed the wounds of our weak human race, and you forgave our sins in God. Grant us, Lord, forgiveness of sins from your treasury. Heal our sins and have mercy on us that we may sing glory to your divinity. I read from James the Apostle of our Lord Jesus Christ before this holy land and before our Father the priest. Glory to the Lord and the Apostles. May their prayer be a wall of protection for this city, for, and for all who dwell in it forever. Amen. My beloved, are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with the oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another, and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective, Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on earth. Then he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. Teacher, he said, what must I do? 
you to inherit eternal life. He said to him, What is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers, who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him pass by on the other side. But a Samaritan while traveling came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out one denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I'll repay you whatever form you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. This is the truth. Peace be with you. Praise and blessing and blessings to Jesus Christ, our Lord, as his words of life. To his Father who sent him to redeem us, and to his living spirit, now and forever. some of those names around from the priest or the Levite and the Samaritan and use different groups that we would be very familiar with today and how would we bristle with uh, reluctance or would we feel the full impact of the gospel. Uh, this is a liturgy that is really shaped for healing and of course when we hear about healing we think first of our physical well-being. And that's only common sense. Uh, that's what's most obvious in our life when we're bothered physically by something because we can identify the pain most of the time. We know exactly what's hurting somewhere, someplace. We might not know what is causing it, but at least we know and are aware of it. And there is really no shame when you say, I have this illness or sickness and you go to the doctor or someone and they give you medicine or the right kind of treatment and how to solve it and how to take care of it. And uh, the letter that James wrote was certainly addressing those things. And Jesus spent a lot of time uh, doing physical healing. So we should never minimize the power that Jesus has in doing healing physically. There is a lot of healings that never take place, one, because they, people have not heard of Jesus, or they have heard of him, but they aren't actually following him, or they heard him and latch out to certain verses that make sure that they don't feel any inconvenience in their belief. Some things only take place through fasting and prayer, and uh, that's very hard to do when we, it's so easy to have all kinds of food and stuff around us. So in some ways we're not always truly attached to and focus on the power that Jesus has in doing healing. Also when you have, don't have empathy and sympathy for others other than just your own pain and the pain of people very close to you, you're not apt to focus on the pains of the world. And I think that is why it's so beautifully matched with the gospel. Because in the gospel, it includes the physical, 
but it also takes the spiritual. And I think a person has to ask, what do we want from God? I woke up somewhere around four in the morning, you know, asking myself, you know, what, you know, knowing that this was uh, the day of healing, and what kind of healing do I want from the Lord? I can't imagine anybody existing that doesn't have some desire of something, of wanting some type of a healing in their personal life, or at least in the life of somebody that they love a great deal. And the, my memory went to when I used to visit the juvenile detention home, and I was with the Franciscans in Cleveland. And I remember asking the juveniles that were there for various reasons, most of them, or all of them, were really positive good reasons. Uh, I mean, they weren't doing positively good things and they got in trouble for doing good things. There was something else going on there. And I asked them, if God was going to answer your next prayer, what would you ask for? And of course, you know, the, the bars on the windows would come off and the guards would all fall asleep and they could walk out. But all of it had to do with escaping from uh, their detention. And I sat there listening and I thought, well, that's logical. I mean, that does make sense, you know, if you're all locked up. And, and for the most part, I think most would want to escape from their prisons of sort. And I remember when I was walking home thinking about some more, I said, yeah, but what good does it do if the problems that they have in their life are still there? The reason that they were put there still exists. You know, what does it solve? But it certainly showed the primitive desire to have freedom from what is uncomfortable. I also tutored at a suburban school. Uh, well, before I got to that, but I also tutored at an inner city school. And I asked, you know, them the same question, see what type of response they would give. And they said, well, I want to have a Cadillac. And I want to have a Lincoln. I want to be rich. And I want a mansion. And it was all uh, things to do with wealth. But it wasn't really about wealth, it was so that they felt like somebody. Here they were in the inner city with basically nothing. And so their dreams were to have something. And when I helped out at the suburban school, uh, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. And they talked about profession. And I thought, that's very interesting. And the sense that what we experience in life is the only reference point that we have and what we can dream of having. Now, the first two examples, you can be rearrested, you can get caught, probably nothing changed in your life and something worse could happen. Yes, you could and then in the inner city, yes, you could get the Cadillac, but could you afford gas? And could you afford the insurance? <coughs> All things that have to do with it. And really, maybe, you know, that's a little complicated for teenagers to think about. And then again, maybe not. But it does reveal something in our relationship with the Lord and what we ask from Him and what I ask for myself. You know, if I knew that. Uh, Jesus was going to answer the next prayer, would I actually, and I joke about, ask for the, the right sequences of numbers on a lottery ticket? And, you know, it's a nice thought and everything, but then you watch TV and you find out that you, uh, most of them wind up being broken a number of years. Maybe that's not such a great idea. But now we're returning to the healing that we might be asking from the Lord. That sometimes the healing is what can change in our life. Now, sometimes it's very proper for us to ask for the very immediate thing. But also what comes along with that is what are the things that I can do in my life that will improve my health or decrease my health? Not only physically, but spiritually. Where am I now? spiritually? And how has it affected me? Am I taking the proper spiritual exercises, the prayers, the scriptures? Am I meditating on them? 
them that I can do what Jesus was trying to get at in this? Do I have enough of my heart available to use all of it to love? Is enough of my spiritual heart available to me enough to actually love God with all of it? And how about myself? What parts in my personal life need to be healed more or are still in need of grace and mercy? I thought that the prayer is beautifully said, made sure that we really don't have nothing without the compassion of Christ and the mercy of Christ. Because that is what is offered to us to begin to have a heart that can do something fully, completely. We can live with only part of a heart. You know, physically we can have blockages so we can only walk maybe a short length of distance. Then can happen to us spiritually too. We can become so spiritually ill that we can do very little in following him. He used the example of the Samaritan because in general, uh, they didn't like Samaritans. They were uh, crisscrossed between pagans and some Jewish blood of them. They were a mixture of everything. And they didn't like them because they weren't pure like them in their estimation. And Jesus didn't say that they were wrong, but maybe they aren't pure. But look what he could do. He could love with more of a heart than the priests and the Levites. In their profession, they're supposed to present the example of what it means to love and to care for others. And not only did they uh, was willing to stay on the right side of the road, but was willing to inconvenience himself and offer from his own treasury what it took to give help to the Samaritan. Because regardless of what kind of a person he was, they didn't even say he was a nice person or a good person that fell in with robbers and all. He didn't value it. He simply knew what was the love. <coughs> and as a reminder for us, when we get anointed with the oil, when we're done blessing the bread, to look at what part in your life is begging to become healthy enough to love more than what it already does. And you might say, well, it loves enough. But that would not be a saint talking. And it certainly wouldn't be the redeemer of the world talking. But it might be honest. But it might be also to our advantage to start with what is most honest in our emotions and our feelings. And see what kind of compassion and healing Jesus can do in this. And that's a journey that each one of us takes. What do we pray for? The bars to come down, or our life to change, that there are no more bars to be put back into. <laughs> Whatever we own, no matter if it's taken away from us, what we treasure most cannot be taken away from us. And that is our faith, that is our hope, that is the way we're asked to walk. And really, that has to be an incredible blessing to know that a person's main feeling and emotion is the love that's burning in their heart or the resentment and angers and judgments that burn a hole through their heart. Page 63. <laughs> again and again, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. <coughs> Of our sins and for the acceptance of our repentance, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the medicine that we receive and the healing to 
to our souls and bodies. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the dwelling of the Holy Spirit in us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O Good Shepherd, you came to seek the lost sheep. Cause no Lord, that we may be sheep of your flock. O Good One, you open your doors to sinners. Open to us the door of your mercy, that we may come to you. With the sign of your cross, mark, Lord, all the members of our body and protect them from all harm. Do not let evil in its inclination dominate at will our eyes, that they may look to you with your look, our ears, that they may be inclined to listen to your word, our lips, that they may sing the glory of your name, our breath, that it may breathe the fragrance of eternal life, our hands, that it may keep knocking at your door and our feet that it may walk on the path, leading to the temple of your divinity. Our soul, then, Lord, will be able with our five senses to raise glory to your holiness. From the treasury of your kindness, grant pardon to all the sins we committed with the sense of our body and soul. Amen. Amen. Again and again, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the perfect health of our soul and body, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. O oh Lord, you open your door to those who knock. Open your door to my weakness as I stand before you. Protect, protect me as a people of my eye. Take me under your wings, that you may not harm me. Let your goodness, O Lord, come toward my supplication, that your mercies may be my protection. Alleluia, alleluia. Forgive our sins and faults, Lord, and have mercy on us all. Again and again, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. For our protection against temptation, weakness and trial, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. Glory to you, O Lord. You experience death, and by your death, you inflicted death to evil, and death itself, as it brought death to Adam. Inflict death, O Lord, to the sin that lives in me, for I became by my own will a slave to it. O Good Shepherd, you sought the wandering sheep, gone astray from your flock. Search out my perdition, as did the woman who lost her dime. You are indeed seeking those who are lost. I will then proclaim and say, Blessed are you, O lover of sinners. Alleluia, alleluia. Again and again, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the dwelling of the Holy Spirit in us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O Christ the King, may your blessings be upon sinners who call to you. Open your door to the humble petition you. May Mary the Virgin give birth to you and intercede with you on our behalf. May the martyrs who gave their lives in your hope join us to implore you. In your mercy, O Lord, reconcile us to you and grant your blessings to all of us. For, Lord, you are abundant in blessings. Again and again, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
for our lives that they may be sanctified, our resolutions that they may be confirmed, and the testimony of our life that it may flourish. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Holy are you, O God. You willingly humbled yourself for our sake. Holy are you, O strong one, in your love for us. You call to penance all sinners. Holy are you, O immortal one, at your door all sinners knock, asking for your mercy. Lord, you accepted death on the cross for our sake. Grant us now mercy and compassion and pardon for our sins. Make us worthy to take refuge in the contrition of heart. May we dwell in your kingdom for the diligent ones and offer prayer and praise to your glorious name now and forever. Again and again, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For new life in your heavenly kingdom, that it may be ours, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Through the incense they offered, Moses and Aaron obtained for Israel the pardon of their faults. As you forgave them their faults, through the incense of Aaron, forgive now, Lord, your worshipers, and through the priests who implore you, Give pardon to the sheep of your flock. Let no anger weary your faithful people who worship you, and who with a contrite heart ask pardon for their sins and faults. Again and again, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For all of us who bow before the Lord, and implore his blessings and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. For the protection of our life and the healing of our soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. For the life in the heavenly kingdom, that we may be counted among the saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. For this oil, that it may be consecrated and for our sins and faults, that they may be forgiven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. Accept, Lord, the incense of your servants, as you accepted Moses in the tabernacle. Be pleased with our prayers, as you did with Phineas and Elizabeth. You are satisfied with the chanting offered to you by Aaron, and you removed death from the people of Israel. Now, Lord, accept the incense that we offer to you. <clears throat> O oh Lord God, in the abundance of your mercy, you cure the infirmity of our soul and body. Bless the soil for those who are anointed with it. May it be a cure and a salvation from all sufferings, ills, and males. May your holy name be glorified through it. You are our all-merciful and compassionate Savior, our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. To you, to your Father, and your Holy Spirit, be glory and thanksgiving forever. Amen. We bless you, we, bless you, we adore you, we acknowledge and ask you, have mercy on us, O Lord, and hear us. May your holy and living spirit, O Lord, come and bless the soil. May the soil be filled with your power. May your divinity abide in it, so it may become the Holy Spirit, the oil of joy, a regenerating oil, a consecrated oil, an angelic shield against the power of the adversary. May it become a joy and eternal happiness to those who believe in it, so that it may protect those who are anointed by it. Because it is for them the oil of the new life, may they shine like heavenly stars in purity and holiness. 
on the day in which the just will radiate like the Son in the kingdom of their Father, with them and among them who offer glory to you forever. Amen. At this time, you'll be able to come forward and I will anoint you with the oil. In the meantime, that call can be recited. You're all invited to come up at this time. Be anointed. My soul is broken and afflicted. My soul yearns for mercy. Come to me, Lord, tell me. Like the woman of fever, who received your blessing, heal my soul, Lord, and grant me the blessing that is from you. You cured the sick, Lord, only by the touch of your hand. Now touch my soul, Lord, heal my infirmity, and forgive my sins. You are a love, tender and healing love. Tell me, Lord, to rise and serve, that I may rise and serve. My soul sings to the one who healed us from our enemies, who granted us total cure from our sickness. My soul sings to the Son, our Savior and our sister, our healer and our merciful one. My soul sings to the Father and to the Holy Spirit for ages to come. Amen.
so that you may find salvation in you, and offer glory to you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We'll continue with the liturgy in the Red Books, page 749, with the entrance to the altar. I will go to the altar of God, to God who will joy to my youth, to the abundance of your goodness and to your house, and worship in your holy temple. Guide me, O Lord, in your fear, and instruct me in your justice. Pray for me to the Lord. May God accept your suffering and have mercy on us for your prayer. The Lord has reigned, clothed in majesty. Hallelujah. Our the Lord Jesus said, I am the bread of life. From the Father I was sent, as word without flesh to give new life. Of the Virgin Mary I was born, taking flesh as man. Good earth to seize a seed, her womb received me. Priestly hands now lift me high above the altars, our gifts the gifts the Lord received. Amen. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and the plan of salvation for us, we call upon us all our hopes of the God who added to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, St. Mary, St. Joseph, and St. Jude. Remember God and the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers, and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for Sierra. Remember also those who share with us today in this offering. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Mary, Mother of God, Lord of God, and with and her remember all the righteous ones, prophets and apostles, martyrs and the priests, and the children of the church from age to age. The Lord be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Holy Father, grant security and peace and everlasting love to your church, that we may raise by your thanks to you, to your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to your holy altar, God. Peace to the holy mystery placed upon you. Peace to your observer of the Holy, 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 
mighty Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your great glory. Hosanna in the heights. We <coughs> will come in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Bashar Peter Archangel, and Mary Catherine Gregory, John our Bishop, and all the bishops of the true faith, and with blameless lives and purity and holiness, may they guide your church and present you a faithful people who will honor your name. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear mercy. O Lord, reward those who do good, free those bound by hardships, liberate the poor, and visit those who are dejected, distressed, and weary. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. O Lord, be a fortification for every city and country that truly believes in you and takes refuge in you. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. O Lord, strengthen those who call upon the mother of your Son, Jesus Christ, and the saints who have pleased you, especially St. Joseph, St. Jude, and St. Chabel. Through your grace, make us up, departed worthy of the eternal blessings that you have prepared for your saints. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. We remember all those who struggle with chronic illness and pain in life. We especially remember those who are struggling with illness over this Lenten season, especially Sierra. We pray to the Lord. <coughs> Lord, have mercy. O Lord, forgive the faith of the departed who have been redeemed by the death of your only Son, and on the day when all are rescued from death, deliver from the realm of the dead, and raised from the dust of the grave. The grace of your only Son will have been glorified in us and in them. Through him we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for the rest, and rest of God to the departed and forgive the sins we have committed with or without full knowledge. O Lord, in the resurrection on the last day when all is renewed, make us and our departed worthy for your grace of the joy of your heavenly kingdom. In us and in all things, we are blessed and most honored name and glorified, praised and exalted with the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and then of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As, As it was, was, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. We have believed and have approached, and now we seal and break this oblation, the heavenly bread, the body of the Word, who is the living God. You have and united, O oh Lord, you your divinity with our humanity, and our humanity with your divinity, your life with our mortality, and our mortality with your life. You have assumed what is ours, and you have given us what is yours, for the life and salvation of our souls. To you be glory forever. O Lord, you are the pleasing oblation who offered yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice who offered yourself to your Father. You are the high priest who offered yourself as the Lamb. Through your mercy, may our prayer rise like incense which we are <coughs> you. To you be glory forever. O Lord, open our mouths and lips, sanctify our bodies and souls, and purify our minds and consciences, so that we may call upon you, O Father, mercy, and employ your praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever.
to ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy, yes, Lord, holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One, one Holy Father, one, one, one Holy Son, one, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, who is one in heaven and on earth, to the be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory forever. The host of angels have come to stand with us at the holy altar. They sing in chorus and carry Christ the Lamb, sacrificed before us. O come and see him, the saving Lamb of God, who will grant forgiveness. Hallelujah. See on us, O Lord, O compassionate and merciful one, O lover of all people, have mercy on us.
Father, and our mouths to cuss and to earthly food, give you thanks for your grace that has made us worthy of this heavenly food, the body and blood of your only Son. Through him and with him, glory, power, and honor be to you, in your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And with, and with your spirit. O Christ, for the heavenly bread came down, and became for us the food that does not perish. At your second coming, may we not become the food of the imperishable fire. We raise glory and thanks to you and to your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessing we have received from the forgiving of the Lord. May the blessing of the whole, most holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom we glory forever. Amen. Amen. I leave you in peace, O holy altar, and I hope to return to you in peace. May the offering I have received from you be for the forgiveness of my faults and the remission of my sins. I may stand without shame or fear before the holy altar. I do not know if I shall be able to return to you again to offer another sacrifice. I leave you in peace. Have a wonderful day. Uh, next week, tomorrow service is at 7 p.m. and then Friday at 11 a.m. so that people don't have to pass that extra hour. And then Friday at 7 p.m. You know, I'm not used to somebody saying, oh, you look beautiful in that. <laughs> but Amelia said that. I said that. <laughs> yeah. uh, you're in the service, don't say that to you. But, uh, thank you. Alamakum. <laughs> Alamakum. <laughs>